if you do know of someone who is addicted to a diazepam or any form of drugs for that matter, you may be struggling with how to approach them in a way that gives you the best chance for both of you for improving their situation and persevering with your relationship, right? Addictions makes this difficult and rendering the outcome unpredictable how they can take measure steps to improve your odds of success. For the best results, Connor, it's two-part approach based on education and communicate yourself. Consult for diazepam addiction. Understanding the diazepam effects on a user will aid in your ability to approach your loved one at the best result. It can be helpful to understand the physical changes of the body produced by the diazepam. For example, once consumed, diazepam interacts with the chemical messengers of the brain to understand the effects of the GABA, which is your gamma aminobutyric acid. In this process, GABA works to slow the brain activity, which leads to the drugs depressing effects. Knowing and recognising the signs of intoxication will also help you to understand the extent problem. That is, you'll be able to better access the frequency and intensity of the use. People abusing diazepam may appear drunk as many effects overlap with alcohol use. They will likely appear sedated and in some cases they may appear confused or in a stupor. Even though these symptoms may not sound appealing to any of us or to someone who doesn't use Valium, the pleasurable sensations triggered by the sedative often leads to the desired repeat use. Also known that diazepam shares many properties with other benzodiazepines, such as Xanthix, Antivin and Clopinum 1, so your loved one may be abusing other benzos interchangeably as their needs and the availability of the drugs may change. These drugs will provide similar effects but will differ slightly in how quickly these effects are felt and how long they last. Lastly, learning about addiction will provide the opportunity to develop realistic expectations for your loved one and create a plan, however, it's important to understand that addiction changes the brain and can alter normal decision making. So despite your fears, your loved one may initially refuse your offer to help. This isn't a sign to give up the continued support and communication will increase your chances of eventual success. Now the next step is your communication. Communicate effectively. Once Effective communication. Once I'm with the accurate and right information and a period of observation with seeing what your friend is going through or your partner, you might approach your loved one from an educated position to communicate your concerns and goals. Remember, it's not enough to understand the problem. You must be able to communicate passionately and non-judgmentally at the best time and a place that promotes feelings of safety, calm and support and no judgment. Be sure to choose a time that your loved one is not intoxicated and your feelings are under control. If you enter the situation with intense emotions, however, your loved one is more likely to respond with anger, shame and worry. While you can't predict how the conversation will go, there are certain ways you can communicate to raise your concerns or chances of getting your loved one to accept the help they need. Approach your loved one with a calm, non-judgmental stance and emphasize this teamwork on a common goal. Two, have a plan and direction for the meeting while re- remaining flexible. Three, ask many questions to understand their perspective and struggles. Four, communicate your position clearly and follow up with consistency. Five, state your belief in their abilities and the positive characteristics they possess. If you worry about your ability to effectively approach your loved one, you can find support in a form of psychotherapy aimed at loved ones of it or some form of counselling. This specialised treatment is called community reinforcement and family training. This strives to teach you to identify substance abuse, understand how substance use develops, modify your reactions and responses to the addictive, addicted individual, improving your communication skills, provide consistent limits, care for your own well-being, encourage professional treatment when opportunities are moved. A formal intervention is a group meeting where diazepam users is confronted by those who love them and asked to end their substance use and seek the treatment immediately. Through the use of positive peer pressure, in explaining future consequences of continuing to abuse the drug intervention work to promote treatment. These considering a formal, informal or stage intervention should be understood the potential drawbacks, however, before attempting to plan one. Due to the intense emotion exposed during an intervention, relationships may be damaged and the user may feel defensive and resistant to accepting help to reduce the risk of harm considering the use of interventionists are trained professional that organizes ending diazepam addiction isn't always dangerous but it does pose unique challenges for the user in the form of increased 
risk of agitation, seizures, and delirium because terminating use can bring about significant symptoms of withdrawal. Medically assisted detoxification is often recommended as the most appropriate course of action and treatment. Detoxification allows the body to process and remove diazepam and any other form of drug from the system while a medication team accesses the vitals, improves comfort and manages any medical complications that may come about during this process. It may include the following. Gradually reducing the dose over a period of weeks or months particularly important for the users to take of the ones in high doses. Switching to another benzodiazepam medication with a slower onset of action and potentially less abuse potential such as chlordiazepoxide, Librium in order to mitigate seizure risk during the withdrawal process. Switching from diazepam to long-acting barbiturates such as phenobarbital. Following detoxification, the recovering individual will continue addiction treatment throughout the behavioral interventions such as motivational and inter nurturing and interviewing. This treatment works to nurture and develop intrinsic motivation to end the drug use and enter into a period of recovery rather than relying on incentives from outside sources. Intrinsic reward factors. Instead of focusing on intrinsic motivators, this style rewards the individual with tangible reinforces and prizes for completing recovery focused behaviors like attending the appointments, engaging in community activities, and submitting their clean drug tests. Cognitive behavioral therapy as well as coping strategies. This is an effective treatment for a range of mental health and substance abuse issues. This treatment investigates how thoughts, feelings, and behaviors of the individual are connected to and influence the use at the very beginning. Communication-based family therapy. To treat the individual and the people in their environment, family therapy will need to be included in significant supports to address communication and overall family. Well, this quickly ends a real short video of how to approach an addict. I hope you like this. Smash the like, comment below. Feel free to share these videos around. Feel free to follow me on my social medias. Feel free to also visit my store if you would like to support me by, you know, donating. Also, the links in the description below will be for the crowdfunding pages that I'm on. So, all of the day, guys, thanks for support. Thanks for watching. Do what love. Love it. Dude. Until next time, it's me, Zonia, and I'll see you again.